Good morning, folks. After yesterday's second seven-pointer in the Solomon Islands, they are on foreshock watch. Seismicity takes a back seat today, however. By the time tomorrow's news is released, the eclipse will be over, so the time to listen is now. If you're in the eastern United States or western South America, the eclipse starts for us after midnight, 2 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. It will occur after the moon passes its high point in the sky and on its way to setting. If you live in the west coast of the USA or Hawaii, the eclipse will be beautifully visible near the top of the sky. Best viewing for you guys, and remember to note Mars and Spica and Saturn out there as well. Finally, if you live in the western Pacific, this is the view from New Zealand. Just after sunset, the moon will rise and be blanked out quickly thereafter. Something interesting about this eclipse, most of you know the Laddie, orbiting the moon, and many of you have seen the lunar impacts from meteors, many of which were caught by the Laddie itself. But the satellite may not survive the extended period without solar energy, but it would only be about a week lost of data. They plan to crash her into the lunar surface for an experiment in about one week. Let's look forward to that as well. So here we are folks, despite every computer model and statistical analysis being pathetically wrong for 20 years, they keep going. While observational evidence goes the opposite direction, they keep promising that it's now the air that injected heat into the Pacific and not the other way around like they've claimed for decades. Folks, they can make computer models and stats say whatever they want. Due diligence is my specialty. Vetting experts was my profession for years. Taking PhDs on one side and looking at the arguments from PhDs on the other. That's what I did, that's what I still do. And if you haven't seen my in-person literature review, it will make you wonder what's so complex about this issue. It truly is as simple and easy to understand as I've made it there. You've been lied to, and if you're looking for a reason why, I've spent countless hours producing the Agenda 21 Counter-Strike series at our website, suspiciousobservers.org. Controlling the climate agenda is paramount to controlling our future and the future of the world's resources. Don't let them be taken from us. Anywho, that is one calm star. If I didn't know better, I'd say this behavior at solar maximum is indicative of a pending grand minimum. But that's just me. Per the Uyen factors, we had no intensification or storm formation. We'll begin a new candidate upon larger eruptive activity. Meanwhile, the U.S. is not waiting. Severe weather is dropping along the convergence line here, and this one is a doozy. More than usual, you should see how different these air masses are in many ways. Folks, they'll work out all their differences in a short alley along the convergence, and during the march towards equilibrium, we get the severe activity. Let's also take note of a multi-low system in the North Pacific. Rain much, Alaska? Down under, you see two systems. One is the cyclone remnants, and the other has slowly stacked her chips between the nations. Could be relevant for residents today. West of Spain, still watching that same intruding airflow from the south. Yesterday, we noted baffling jet stream patterns, and you knew that wouldn't last, but a pinchback still exists there driving the flow today. Northern parts of Europe continue taking the cloud line took two gamma bursts overnight. They both came from way down south near the celestial axis for the southern hemisphere, but from definitively different constellations. We're seeing the sunspots coming back in an unexpected way. Sensing that the establishment couldn't get the job done, a couple young guns jumped up to the photosphere and began putting together their crews. The larger, more mature sunspot groups are mostly magnetically separated, but the two new groups are significantly complex even having been born in the last day. Things may change as they grow and spread, but as of now, positive and negative are in a position to ramp the flaring. We also have a newcomer on the limb, barely visible. All of these are ramping the flaring back up, and that may continue today. Solar wind is calm. We took only the slightest of speed ramps yesterday, meaning that the coronal hole streams likely missed north and south, and we got a slightly energized density bulge between them only. With the ring of fire, Taking some time out for being a jerk the last few days, we're watching his next energy shot approaching delivery. It's positive polarity. And to check the power, we have to look over to the other side of the chart. Very strong. It's dark and encroaching behind the brighter active region. That coronal hole will be here soon. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.